Welcome back to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. And we're just a couple of nerds in love ranking the movies we love. And we're starting with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So our film tonight is Doctor Strange. Mm -hmm. When we score these films and we rank them, we're not, score we're not ranking them based on what our, our favorite Marvel movies were. Right. Um, you know, we could have just done that just in one big video. We're trying to go and trying to score these films based on the categories that we think... Uh, fit into what makes up a great Marvel movie, kind of from what they've showed us. Like, they've showed us that, you know, they care about humor, they care about heart. Um, action, obviously. Action, obviously. Female empowerment's become a big, big part of them. Yeah, female empowerment's Thank become you, a big Marvel. thing of it. Um, the, the different side characters, because the Marvel Universe is so big, yeah. and they have interconnected all these different movies, bringing different characters into their movies and making them kind of an essential part of it. Our first category is lead male and lead female likability. So the two lead characters in this one are Doctor Strange and Christine Palmer. Oh, no, wait. It's not Christine Palmer. I thought it was Christine Palmer. So when he said that, I kind of looked at him like he had two heads, and I said, of course our female lead is the ancient one. So for Doctor Strange, I gave him a three. I thought he was a badass in this one. Uh, you know, he's, he's super intelligent. He's a brilliant surgeon, even when he loses his hands. And he ends up becoming... Uh, the master of the mystical arts, he's even more badass. For the ancient one, I gave her a three as well. She's a badass. I mean, she's the ancient one, so she's the sorcerer supreme until Doctor Strange takes that title from her. I gave both the ancient one and Doctor Strange a score of three as well. Uh, for the ancient one, there's no question, she's a badass. With Doctor Strange, when he starts, I thought of him as maybe a score of two. I mean, he's a, he's a brilliant guy, and sure, maybe I'd grab a drink with him, but he's kind of a cocky, arrogant, mm -hmm. obnoxious, egomaniacal douchebag. Um, so not exactly somebody who I'd be overly attracted to, not just in like a, a romantic sense, but in sort of any sense. Uh, but where he ends, he's willing to self-sacrifice, he's willing to take the big risks to save other people, um, and he's grown a huge amount. So sort of Dr. Strange at the end, I'm like, well, he could maybe be a candidate for a four. So you got a three because that's the happy medium. Uh, next category is lead male, lead female bang ability. Uh, so unfortunately, both these characters got a zero for me. Um, Doctor Strange is kind of a surprise there. Uh, I haven't gotten a male character of anything past a zero so far. Um, for the ancient one, I just I don't even think she'd be interested in sex. So for me, the ancient one got a zero. While she might have some cool mystical something or another, she doesn't strike me as a sexual being. So yeah. I, I don't necessarily believe that she's going to use those in the bedroom or... or yeah. Uh, it doesn't take away from her character. I think she's no. still, I mean, she's still a badass and she's still a great character despite the lack of being ability or whatever. It's not like, this isn't a category that we need, but it's just a category that bumps people up. So, you know, if they can be, you know, someone they want to be friends with and they're super attractive, like, you know, the sexuality is there and everything and the relatability, that just boosts their score up more, but it doesn't mean that we don't like them or they're not a likable character or not an enjoyable character if they're lacking these elements. Exactly. For Doctor Strange, I gave him a score of three, which is, you know, I think he could teach me a thing or two. Um, and that's, that's pretty much all, that's, that's what you always give, like, arrogant douchebags. You're like, I hate them, I hate them, but in the bedroom, hey, they're probably pretty great. I didn't, okay, I didn't say hate, because there are definitely arrogant douchebags on the villain side who get a zero bang ability. Mm. Uh, Robert Redford, who is an incredibly attractive guy, but definitely got that score. I think okay. this is for the guys who start out with the they disgust me sort of personality and end with the good personality, but like there's a whole two to three hour movie in between that I'm mm. like, meh, like, like maybe by the end, it's, you know, a little bit more sex, like morning sex and shower sex, but like the beginning was don't touch me with a 10 foot pole. So like our next category is lead male and lead female relatability. For the ancient one, I gave her a score of zero. She's a master of the mystical arts and I've lived for, you know, centuries, so yeah. it's kind of hard to relate to her. Uh, I don't even really meditate, so... <laughs> Just saying, like... You got zero in common with her. It's like, yeah. <laughs> do yoga at least? I Come recognize on, the like... chakras. I mean, I recognize, you know, but I just... Yeah. yeah. And for Dr. Strange, I gave him a score of one, um, which is, you know, I, I, I know some people like that exist in the world, basically. And that's actually... Those made my scores exactly. I gave the ancient one a zero, and I gave Dr. Strange a one as well. Pretty much for the same reasons. Up next is the villain. Now, the villain in this one was Caecilius. That's who we decided was the ultimate villain. 
Dormammu, it makes an appearance as well. Um, he makes it onto our side characters list later. It kind of mirrors uh, Guardians of the Gal Galaxy, where you had Ronin, and then you had Thanos. It's like, yeah. yeah, Thanos is behind the scenes pulling the strings, but he's not really a big character in the film, per se. So Kaecilius' end goal is to bring Dormammu to Earth and encompass it in all of darkness, the dark world, the dark dimension. Who's affected by this? Well, I said three. A world's health and happiness is at stake. Oh, see, see I, I didn't think anyone was really affected by this at all. I gave it a zero. <laughs> I give it a three, two. It's clearly a three. I mean, it's, so I just want to see your reaction. Our next category is how strong is the villain compared to the hero? I thought Cassilius was a four. I thought he was significantly stronger than the heroes. He can alter the world itself and, uh, you know, change the shape and make Doctor Strange running on a treadmill, basically, on a, on a piece of wood. Um, so Doctor Strange hasn't, he's just, he's still a beginner. He's just learning this mystical arts. He's not really a master yet. I said they're about equal, so I give the villain a score of two in this one. The ancient one, she comes in and she clearly is at least evenly matched with Kaecilius, if not slightly stronger than him. And, uh... Dr. Yeah, well, okay, well, now you throw on the ancient one in there uh, as well. team and villain team. I'm adding Dormammu to the villain team, so now they are significantly stronger. I think it's a four. I win. Actually, Doctor Strange still beats Dormammu, so I don't... He doesn't beat Dormammu. No, no, no. They make a negotiation, all right, at the end. And Dormammu says, okay, you know what? I'm bored of just killing you over and over and over again. Dormammu's clearly stronger than Doctor Strange. Get to use parlor tricks. They got these little trick, little time stone tricks. Doctor Strange got smarter than him. This, this name should be called Dormammu so much better than Doctor Strange. <laughs> what? Do you care about the villain? I went back and forth. Uh, between a zero, no, not at all, and one, well, I just want our heroes to win. Ultimately, I gave him a one that I just want our heroes to win, so. The way he does that underhanded stab to the mm. ancient one, uh, yeah. he fights dirty. Plus, he's got serious eyeliner issues that just annoyed the heck out of me. So, you know, he was annoying enough that I wouldn't mind seeing him dead. He gets okay. a score of two. Villain bang ability. So, after all of that... He gets a zero. Yeah. Yes, he does. Our next category is side, side characters. characters. So who do we have for our side characters? We have Dormammu, mm -hmm. Christine Palmer, yep. uh, Mordo, Wong, and then... The Cloak. Uh, the Cloak. I gave Dormammu and I gave Mordo a one. I said they were just there for the plot. I actually had the exact same response. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. So we are a very similar in this one so far. Uh, Dormammu and Mordo both got a score of one for me as well. They were just there for the plot. So my two is Christine Palmer. I just got one in the two category. Oh, wow. Um, I said that she makes our hero, Stephen Strange, more likable, redeemable, and relatable. Um, and really, I think it's because Christine grounds Doctor Strange. She gives him a little bit of, of drama with relationship issues. She also cares about him. He obviously cares about her. So there's a little more of a human element that mm. comes out of him with Christine. Okay. And for me, I get Christine Palmer too as well. Uh, you know, for this very similar reasons, I think that she, her relationship with Doctor Strange and their banter back and forth, uh, really makes Doctor Strange more more relatable and more likable. I have a feeling I, I think I know what you're going with Wong. You might might have given Wong a three. I gave him a two. I, I said that Ooh. Wong's relationship with Doctor Strange, I really like their banter um, as well and their friendship. So I gave him. I ended up giving him a two. I did give him a three. In a movie that does not have a lot of comic relief, his character did seem to be the comedic character that was put in here. Uh, see, and I think the comedic character was the cloak. I thought Doctor Strange's cloak was hilarious in this one when he wipes his, the tears from his eyes. Oh, God, and, uh, you know, it's just, I, I, the cloak is, is funny. And the cloak reminds me a lot of the robot from Iron Man, from the original Iron Man. And I love that robot, and I love his cloak as well. So I gave him a three. And I think you're going to laugh at me for this, but I actually gave the cloak the MCS. Oh my god, I was wondering if you are going to do that. I knew he was going to laugh at me for that. What? But the reason I did it's that... It's in it for like 20 minutes. I don't care. <laughs> you still didn't let me have the dog from Hulk, so I'm having the cloak as my MCS. Wow. Um, okay. The reason that I did that is for several things. Uh, one, he becomes a very significant part of Doctor Strange. Uh, mm -hmm. He is iconic as much as the man is, and a part of his icon. Yeah. Um, so that's one. Two, he kicks butt. This cloak, cloak has some does. serious fighting moves. Yeah. So, okay, the cloak's a badass. Three, the, the cloak is funny, the cloak as is, you mentioned. Yes. Um, he's 
wiping tears away. He's jerking Doctor Strange back towards yeah. the appropriate weapon to use because Doctor Strange wants to go and get an axe off the wall. And last but not least, the cloak's got major heart factor. And I think part of that was the wiping the tears away at the end, but he really brings another human element to Doctor Strange. And he's kind of like in the mm. same way that a pet would be. Like he he humanizes him. He's funny, but he also brings heart to the mix. And for me, if you have humor and you have heart, I mean, I get very nervous when the cloak fights. If anything happens to that cloak, I am going to yeah. ugly cry. Like, there is no doubt about it. Moving on to the plot. Uh, now, the plot in this one, I gave it a three. I thought it was deliciously unexpected. We're being thrown into a world that we're not familiar with at all. Um, so there's a lot of information getting thrown at you, so you really need to pay attention uh, to this one. And for me, I think it got a four in part because of what you just said. I just think this movie was so visually stunning. It was. Um, We're not, this is not visual effects, I though. Know. That's visual effects. That is I a know. separate category. You can't put visual effects in the plot. It's, it's a different category. But I think, so the two, I think the two are related. Well, this whole, everything's related. May I finish? Only if you couldn't say the right May thing. May I finish? Um, I think because the mystical arts are so, so much on display through the visual element of this movie, to understand what kind of world Stephen Strange is really going into and the challenges that he's facing and what he's learning and why he has to learn it, um, you, you can't miss the visuals that are in this movie. Mm -hmm. um, to see what Caecilius is capable of, to see what he can do, to see what the Time Stone is capable of and how, how that comes into play, to see what the Ancient Ones... I mean, there's just there's so much magic and so much crazy stuff that's mm -hmm. told not just through plot points and exposition from characters, but through the visual element and the magic that's on display that I think you have to, you have to be there to see it. Female empowerment. What role do women play in this movie? Um, this is a very male-dominating cast. Yeah. So we don't have a lot of females to pull from in this one. Mm -hmm. All that being said, the females that they do have, they make great use of. We have Christine Palmer and we have the Ancient One. See, I, I didn't actually factor in Christine Palmer at all as far as female empowerment goes. This, To me, this was all the Ancient One, and that's why I got a four. That the female lead is a true hero. Uh, the Ancient One is the most powerful sorcerer on the planet, um, you know, until she passes that mantle over to Doctor Strange. Uh, so the, I mean, there's, there's just no question that she's a hero. And see, I also had a four, and for much the same reason, but I had a feeling that you were going to talk about the Ancient One, which is why I had to make a plug for Christine Palmer. All right. I'm going to make one more for her as well. Okay, so uh, for Christine Palmer. This commercial is brought to you by Bethany. I love the scene in uh, the apartment that you mentioned, mm -hmm. when they're sort of having like their breakup yeah. scene. I love the way that she stuck up for herself, and how she had the self-respect to when Doctor Strange was, was pushing her away, mm -hmm. and too invested in his own pain to accept help, she had the self-respect to say, you know what, I'm not going to stay here and do this. Because uh, he says some pretty horrible things to her. Yeah, he does. And I think so often in Hollywood films, it's depicted that the woman hears this, she takes it on board, and then she's still there for him, and the message is kind of like, stand by your man no matter what. Mm -hmm. I have to applaud Christine Palmer in this room because I think she made the right call. And she took care of herself. And to be perfectly honest, if you're not taking care of yourself, you're no good to anyone else. Our next category is soundtrack. I gave soundtrack a one. So I gave it a score of one, which is, there's one or two cool tunes. So next up is humor. So I gave, I gave humor a score of 26. And the fact that I was able to get that, dealing with everything that it dealt with, as far as di different dimensions and, uh, you know, Doctor Strange training up and learning all this new world. I think they did a really great job incorporating humor in this movie, even though it wasn't maybe not Marvel's funniest film. I gave it a score of 28, uh, so our scores were pretty pretty similar. pretty similar. Up next is visual effects. Uh, for visual effects, it got a 27 for me, because a 4 is just not enough. <laughs> this, the visual effects in this movie yeah. were was off the charts. Yeah. Uh, you knew it was CGI, you knew it wasn't real, you knew like I mean everything was computer generated, but at the same time, it looked so authentic and it looked so real, and you were not pulled out of this movie at, at any point because of some, something didn't look believable. Um, so it got a four, but it, it, it should have gotten more. I mean, I wish I could give this more points because to me, this is the, uh, probably Marvel's most visually stunning film. I, I mean, <laughs> ditto. Oh <Boom! laughs> my! <Yes. laughs> yeah. That's how good the visual effects were. It was, you know. Yeah, I mean, honestly, they they were 
amazing. Next up is Love Story. We decided that the Love Story was between Christine Palmer and Doctor Strange. Yeah. Um, it wasn't between our two leads, which were Doctor Strange and the Ancient One. I gave it a two. I thought it was believable, at least. Meh. This got a one. Dialogue. Dialogue, I gave it a three. I thought it was clever, it was sharp, it was witty. Um, and I think it was also pretty poignant. I think that the scene between the Ancient One and Doctor Strange when she is... Spoiler alert, when she's dying, death is what gives life meaning. The fact that we have such a short amount of time on this on this planet, you know, considering how long this planet's been here, and you know, <laughs> um, we gotta make the most of it. And you got you know, and you have to use your gifts um, to to help out as many people as possible and make the world a better place. And so I thought that was that was a great message. I feel like ditto again. <laughs> um, I also gave it a score of three. I said I thought it was sharp, clever, and witty. Our next category is action sequences. So after your mind is elevated, let's talk about some butt kicking. <laughs> uh, because that's really what we're looking for in a Marvel movie anyway. Yeah. So we agreed there were four main action sequences in this. Yes. Um, I gave them a score of three. And so that brings my total action score to a score of 12. Uh, I did as well. I gave, them a, I gave it a three. So my score was a 12. Brings us to our final category, heart. Uh, how emotionally engaging was this film? I gave it a one. I said it had a sweet moment or two. Uh, mainly the moment between Doctor Strange and um, and Ancient One. I thought that was a sweet moment. But I was never, I never cried. I never got misty-eyed. Um, never really. So that's, I, I gave it a one. I got misty-eyed. Really? Yeah. Uh, for the Ancient One. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I gave this a score of three. Moving on to our final scores. So my final score for Doctor Strange was an 80. Mine was an 89. Which gives it a total score of 84.5, which puts it uh, just above Avengers Age of Ultron right now and right below Iron Man 3. If you like this film, uh, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, let the world know about it, and consider subscribing to our channel because if we can get to 100 followers on uh, YouTube, we're going to release a video of us doing a baby group dance as a thank you. And if we can get to 200 followers on YouTube, uh, 200 subscribers on YouTube, like followers, subscribers, uh, they, different, different places have different things. I'm thinking about Twitter now. Uh, if we can get to 200 subscribers on YouTube, then we're going to release a bad reenactment video from, we're going to do a scene from Age of Ultron, and we're going to do it uh, horribly because we don't have a budget like uh, Marvel does. So, you know, get us that many subscribers so that you can viciously make fun of us because that's what the internet's for. Yeah, exactly. Um, and if you are looking to, speaking of Twitter, follow us, you can follow us on Twitter at Definitive Not, and you can follow us on Instagram at Not Definitive. So go ahead and rewatch these movies, and uh, you can download our ranking sheet, our scoring sheet, or fill it out online because um, your score matters to us. And go ahead and post it down in the comments below, and we'll factor that into our our scoring system. And you know it'll change maybe the rank of where these films rank in the uh, everything. Um, so our score for Doctor Strange was an eighty four point five. But that is definitely not definitive. <laughs>